Where's the ground bunker? This is your proprietor. It's uh, Thursday afternoon. I haven't been on YouTube in a while, but uh, we had uh, some new legal news today. And I thought that was worth talking about because it's a little complicated. I wanted to make sure people understand what's going on. I'm talking about the labor trafficking lawsuit that was filed by Valeska Paris and the Baxters, Gawain and Laura Baxter. All three are residents of Australia, and they are former Sea Org workers who are alleging that as children and adults, they were forced into the Sea Org, forced into uh, grueling labor uh, practices, were abused, punished. Valeska says she was sexually abused by some of her coworkers, and that Scientology is at fault for putting them through all this. They sued in, uh, I want to say, 2022 in a Tampa federal court. Why there? Well, because they said that most of this abuse took place on the free winds, Scientology's cruise ship that uh, sails in the Caribbean. And so Tampa made sense because that's the area from which the ship sails, the Clearwater area, that thing. Um, and right away, Scientology whipped out its usual legal maneuver and said, these are former Scientologists who signed contracts promising never to sue Scientology and instead to submit their grievances to religious arbitration. And Valeska's attorneys responded by saying, well, you might have their names on some contracts, but they were forced to sign those. They were signed under duress. They're fraudulent. They weren't allowed to read them. And each of them submitted uh, declarations, if you remember, where they talked about uh, how they, they were just told to sign this thing. They couldn't read it. They didn't know what they were signing. And the judge seemed to be interested in that. He, uh, Mark Bunker went to one of the hearings for us, and the judge memorably asked Scientology's attorneys if we actually had video of these Sea Org workers signing these documents with a gun to their head, would you still consider them to be legitimate contracts and not sign under duress? And the Scientology attorneys didn't blink an eye. They said, yeah, they would be legitimate. So that just shows you the ludicrous uh, way that Scientology looks at this and that the judge was very, very concerned about them being signed under duress. But here was the problem. Judge Thomas Barber said that there was a 1967 Supreme Court ruling called Prima Paint that suggested that when you have a dispute like that about whether the contract was signed under duress or is fraudulent, that it's the arbitrator who decides that. Well, that's a problem here because in Scientology arbitration, the panel of three arbitrators are have to be Scientologists in good standing. And, you know, Valeska is never going to get a fair hearing from them. And so it just seemed incredible that the judge and this federal court couldn't even consider that. And, th and Judge Barber seemed really unhappy about that. And he said, my hands are tied. And he found for Scientology, he forced the lawsuit into religious arbitration uh, and he clearly was unhappy with that situation that even as a federal judge, as, as powerful as federal judges are, he could not look at whether those contracts were fraudulent or not. Um, rather than go directly into the arbitration, Valeska's team then asked Judge Barber to allow them to make a interlocutory appeal petition to the 11th Circuit even though normally they would have to go through the arbitration and then after it's done, then appeal to appeals court. They asked for the right to appeal now rather than two or three years from now. And Judge Barber gave them that permission. They then filed their petition with the 11th Circuit, but the 11th Circuit denied it. So what are they going to do now? Now they have to go to the arbitration? Well, a few weeks ago, Valeska's team filed a new document saying that on May 23rd, the U.S. Supreme Court had a new ruling, uh, which is referred to as Susky, I believe. And in the Susky ruling, 
Valeska's attorneys argued, the uh, Supreme Court now says that the judge can look at claims of fraud or duress in the signing of a contract and doesn't have to give it up to the arbitrator. And so given this new law, new ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court is law in the United States, Judge, they want Judge Barber to take back his ruling and start over again, look at all the evidence before making a ruling on arbitration. The other thing they put in that document that was really interesting, in a footnote, they said, you know, by the way, whatever you decide on this reconsideration of the ruling, this ruling shouldn't apply to David Miscavige personally. And remember, this is the case where the court found that David Miscavige had been evading service and named him a defendant, which was pretty cool. Even, even though the lawsuit was then forced into arbitration, just before that, Miscavige was determined to be a, a defendant. And Valeska's attorneys are saying, even, even if it's caught up in arbitration from you know us trying to sue the Church of Scientology, we're suing David Miscavige, and he's not part of that. You should allow the lawsuit to proceed against David Miscavige. I thought that was a pretty interesting argument. All right. So the new, what's the news, Tony? What's going on? So the news is that Scientology has responded. And we always enjoy seeing Scientology's attorneys reply because they're always so angry. And why are they so angry? Because they're not really writing for the court. They're writing for David Miscavige. David Miscavige has to approve every word in their responses. And that's who their real audience is. And so they amp up the outrage. It's always entertaining. But they did point out something I think might, might actually win the day, unfortunately. They, Scientology's attorneys are saying that Valeska's lawyers have misrepresented what that May 23rd Supreme Court ruling says. That the Susky uh, um, ruling is, is not this uh, blanket change that they're representing, but only in certain cases where there's multiple and conflicting contracts regarding arbitration, then the court can weigh in rather than the arbitrator. That's what they're saying the ruling is. And I did look at it and I noticed that it did mention you know multiple uh, contracts. So they're saying that the Scientology's attorneys are saying that the Valeska's lawyers are trying to pull a fast one. They're trying to tell you that a, the Supreme Court ruled on something that would apply to this case when it doesn't. Now, I don't know what the judge is going to think about that. He may, again, he was very frustrated with the Prima Paint ruling of precedent and that he was not going to be able to look at duress. So he may feel that this new ruling does grant him the ability to look at the rest and to back things up and start over again. Uh, we don't know. But that Scientology's argument was that this new ruling doesn't change anything. The other thing was that David Miscavige then filed his own uh, document with uh, his attorney, who's a former Florida bar president, by the way, which I just think is, you know, I understand even bad actors deserve representation in court but come on Pre former president of the bar association is representing david miscavige william shafino is his name so he files a document uh, first of all they're he's you know david miscavige is joining in this, this you know opposition by the other defendants but he's going to address that footnote and says no 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 this is not true when judge barber made the ruling he specifically said that this arbitration motion ruling applies to the Church of Scientology and individuals so that Miscavige was included in that ruling. Uh, and then also uh, they got cute with once again trying to take advantage of the fact that Dave sandbagged the court and was dodging service for so long before the court you know, decided that he that he was a defendant. And they're saying, you know, Judge, you know, when you, by the time you made this ruling, David Miscavige had not been served yet. Well, the reason he hadn't been served was because he was hiding. Ah, uh, it's just amazing. There's just no shame. You know, he, they're going to take it. They, they want the fact that Dave has the money and resources to hide from court to, to then become something that benefits him in court. 
but whatever. I it's it, obviously that's written to please Miscavige, but they might have a point that again the original ruling uh, the, the Barber's ruling did include individuals. Um, I don't know. Let's you know it's it's so tempting to believe that a new Supreme Court ruling should start this case over again, and I would love for Judge Barber to hold a new hearing and get into the duress of those contracts. I think that would be great. It would scare the crap out of Scientology. But I just don't know if he's going to do that because, again, looking at the May 23, 23rd opinion from the Supreme Court, it does talk about multiple contracts, conflicting contracts, and how to resolve that. And I'm not sure that applies to this case, but I don't blame Valeska's attorneys for taking a shot. Uh, again, they know how frustrated Judge Barber is. So that's where that case is. How long is it going to take for Judge Barber to rule on these um, you know, new documents? No idea. Federal judges have their own schedules, but we'll be keeping an eye on it and uh, wishing Valeska the best because I have to say, I thought this was a very creative solution to their problem. Uh, and let's hope Judge Barber agrees. All right. Uh, this is your proprietor signing out.